Hello and welcome to Amrita by the book. My name is Amrita. This is my booktube and today I've been tagged by Berna of Berna's Bookish Adventures to do the country book tag. The concept is pretty straightforward. Um, you basically spell out the name of your country with book titles, but um, I've seen a few people innovate on the prompts and sort of interpret them as they see fit. And so for today, uh, for my video, I thought it would be fun to arrange the books by the name of the author. Now, not being a total monster, I was going to do this by last name, like the first initial of the last name. But then it turns out that there aren't a lot of Indian authors whose last names begin with I, and there are two I's in India. So that threw a bit of a wrench in my plans, but I decided to just sort of sidestep the issue and um, just pick authors whose first names began with I because that also works for my purposes. But before I begin, I just want to give a shout out to Berna who is beautifully supportive and a warm presence and you should really check out her channel if you haven't. She talks about a wide variety of books and um, she's always so passionate about them. I really, really enjoy that. Right, we begin with I, and I in this case is for Ismat Chuktai. If you talk to somebody from the Indian subcontinent, they will always know who Ismat Chuktai is, even if they haven't read her work. And that is because this woman was a giant of Urdu literature. I personally can't read Urdu, I've never learned Nastalik, although that's one of my life goals, and I've only ever read her work in translation. But even in translation, she is so enjoyable and she has such verb and she talks about the interior spaces of characters whom we hardly ever get to meet. Even today, like a good 80 years after she began writing, the book that I'm going to be recommending today is a translation of her work by M. Asaduddin and it's called Lifting the Veil. This was the first book by her that I bought for myself because I borrowed it from the library, I fell in love with it and then I just had to buy a copy. I don't think there are uh, any Kindle versions of her work so I think you can only buy physical copies and they might be a little difficult to get outside of India, I'm not sure. I know that there are more recent translations of her work, but uh, this is the one that I first read and I really enjoyed it, especially because um, it really put her work into context for me as well. And I think that might be of help for people who are not familiar with A, her work, or B, the milieu in which she worked. So she comes from Northern India, like she was born in British India, I think in 1915 or so. And she um, was born in a very conservative Orthodox Muslim family. And she writes about the women that live in those cultures and she writes about them in a very colloquial style that came to revolutionize uh, Urdu writing. Chugtai was part of what is known as the Indian Progressive Writers Movement, which is one of the most influential artistic movements of the 20th century. And you might not have heard of it because, you know, there's a bias against things that are not written in English, but the IPW was a collection of some of the greatest writers, particularly poets, but also writers primarily in Urdu, but also in Hindi and later on in English. And they continue to hold such a sway over the Indian imagination, the Pakistani and Bangladeshi imaginations. They're a very South Asian homegrown movement that grew out of engagement with the issues of the day that continue to be of great relevance today. Chuktai herself wrote about the hypocrisy that is hidden by outwardly manifestations of progressiveness in Indian society. And she talked about the role of women in that society and how they feel suffocated and they are constantly trying to find a space for themselves in a world that has no space for them, that squeezes them in and 
refuses to let them express their desires and it could be sexual desire which was a huge taboo when she wrote about it i mean she was actually sued in um i think it was lahore when she wrote about female desire and sexuality and she was brought up on charges of vulgarity and obscenity and she was eventually acquitted but her writing about those things and her writing in the language that she employed you know it is a because the highest version of urdu literature can uh, be a little bit exclusionary of the common man because it is so beautiful and it is a language that loves itself and is constantly trying to expand its boundaries and i was actually thinking about it when uh, margaret pinard is doing the march of the moderns throughout march and i was really thinking about it in terms of the juxtaposition between what she was trying to do with her writing which is simplify and center the storytelling nature of stories versus what the modernists were trying to do with english and it has to do with the nature of the two languages and how they function and um both of them are reacting to the language you know the way that chuktai chose the forms that chuktai chose to express herself and her language and it was a reaction to the language of urdu itself and the way that the modernists were writing their prose was a reaction to the stodginess of the english literature at the time so it's very interesting to see her in context like a global context and the stories themselves are so well written they're so thought provoking and even after all these years you know all these decades all the changes that india has gone through it is still worth reading and worth engaging with because these are characters that still continue to be excluded from mainstream discourse in a way especially when we are conducting it in english so if you're looking for feminist intersectional literature i really highly recommend isma chuktai if you like literature if you just like good writing then again i recommend her highly Next up is N for RK Narayanan who is a giant of Indian writing in English and um I will be discussing his book The Guide on this podcast called Fuck Boys of Literature and I highly recommend you check that episode out if you're interested in this book or you're interested in English literature in India because Emily Edwards who hosts that program is funny and she is so insightful and she really made me engage with that text in a way that I didn't know that I should be or that I could but basically the guide and uh, most of Narayanan's works are set in this fictional town called Malgudi and it is a tiny town in southern India and it's Um I wouldn't call it satire but it is social commentary and it is funny and it is wholesome and it is a series of vignettes about small town life in colonial India in a way that I think very few people have written about I mean it's so charming and the language again is so um British colonial that i think you know one of the things that emily pointed out to me during the podcast was that it doesn't really even sound indian like the context is indian the prose is indian the writer is indian but because he is an anglicized indian of a specific period um it really fits in seamlessly with the kind of prose that was being written at the time in england or in the united states where by the way he enjoyed a very good reputation in literary circles in india he is very much seen as a weirdly in children's literature adjacent writer and that is because we had to read his work for school and um i mean that kind of colors my view of his work but i think 
rereading the guide which is the story of this hustler in a small town who meets this beautiful woman falls in love with her and then decides to become a Svengali and it completely upends his life and um, it brought up a lot of issues that I hadn't really thought about in context with his work and I really enjoyed it and um, I think if you are looking for more Indian authors to add to your list then you should try R.K. Narayanan. Next is D for G.V. Desani who wrote all about H. Hatta which is a book I think I've mentioned before on this channel but I first came across this book on the recommendation of Salman Rushdie who kind of sees him as the seminal influence on a lot of modern Indian writing in English and um, he was lamenting the fact that um, Desani's work is now sadly out of print and not a lot of people have read his work and he said that Hatter's dazzling, puzzling, leaping prose is the first genuine effort to go beyond the Englishness of the English language. I mean, that's pretty high praise coming from Salman Rushdie. But a lot of people would agree. I mean, there is a lot of discourse about the mad English, is what they call it, of that particular novel. And they don't mean it in a sneering way or a condescending way. It is meant to be... Well, I don't know if it's meant to be a compliment, but it is an accurate description because you never know what that language is going to do when you're reading it. Every page is a surprise and I can't really describe it to you except to say that it is absolutely refreshing. It's like jumping into a pool of freezing cold water because you just come out and you wonder what just happened. It's the story of this Anglo-Malay guy and um, his journey through life and the different experiences and people that he runs into. And I can never forget the first line of the novel, which has been just seared into my brain. I mean, I'm not one of those people at all. Like, I can never remember the covers of books. I can never remember the specific lines. I'm not like a person that writes down quotable quotes. But the first line of this book was, biologically, I was born 50-50 of the species, and it just goes off from there. If you can find a copy of this in your library or online, somebody told me that they found a, uh, like a either used version or else somebody had translated it into an ebook. Um, if you can find one of those, I highly, highly recommend you get it because if you're interested in language, then this is 100% the book that you should be reading. Desani himself was quite the character. Um, I mean, he was born in Kenya, raised in India, and then settled down in the UK for a while before he became a monk and started teaching Buddhism at the University of Texas or Utah or something. And then, oh, it was Texas because he died in Fort Worth at like an ashram that he had founded. Like it's a wild journey of a life. And I don't know why he just faded into obscurity because he was so celebrated. Like his books had forwards from like T.S. Eliot and E.M. Forster and all of them thought he was, you know, the bee's knees. And then uh, later on, he became a very successful columnist for the Illustrated Weekly of India, which was this publication that went uh, out of business a few years ago but was very influential in India for a very long time. So it's not like he just wrote one novel and then he just disappeared. He was very much part of the public consciousness for a very long time but for some reason nobody seems to be reading him and I wouldn't have even known that he existed if Rushdie hadn't put me in his way. So let me pay it forward and suggest that you get All About H. Hatter by G.V. Dasani. Right, we're back at I and the author that I have for this one is Ira Trivedi, who is a, um, I first, I think, engaged with her work as a journalist because she used to write these very interesting cultural pieces. 
And then um, eventually she came out with this book and this is non-fiction and it's called India in Love, Marriage and Sexuality in the 21st Century and it's a reported book. Uh, she went out and she met with people and she did her interviews and surveys and her research and it basically is a snapshot of a country in transformation you know um, she wanted to talk about how young Indians are dealing with marriage and with their sexuality and how the government and the culture and traditionalism and progressive and progressiveness is all coming together and changing things and it's a very interesting book I feel like it's already a little bit out of date because India just moves at such a fast pace like everything that happened like last year is already old news so um, a lot of these things are very specific to that particular time especially because when she's talking about things like homosexuality for instance um, she's talking about like court cases that are now out of date However, marriage, sexuality, dating, these all tend to be issues that are of perennial interest to Indians and uh, those who look at India sociologically as well. Because I was actually in a room on Clubhouse and we were talking about this Netflix reality show about uh, Indian weddings and everybody had an opinion almost everybody had watched it I felt like an outlier because I hadn't watched it but you know people really do spend a lot of time thinking about this stuff so um, if you are Indian then definitely pick this book up and if you're not Indian and you'd like to see how uh, things are done elsewhere in the world then again I recommend this book it's pretty interesting I believe she's also written a couple of fiction novels that I have not read but um, I think were reviewed rather well and um, she's also reinvented herself as a yoga guru which I don't know what that's about but if you search for her name and the recommendations come back for a yoga guru um, you haven't gone mad it's not the wrong person it's her uh, she just leads an interesting life. And so we come to A, which is for Arvind Adiga, who wrote The White Tiger, which is a book that I've seen a lot more people talk about in the wake of the Netflix movie that came out a little while ago. You can find my review of the novel that I'm going to link um, up here in one of the cards. But also, um, this is an interesting book to be reading at this point in time because um, when this book came out it was one of the first books in Indian writing to really tackle the idea of class and caste in India and how the two are intertwined and how it feeds into several separate systems of oppression and just how bad things can get. Um, and it's uh, a topic that a lot of Indians either are willfully ignorant about or wish to be willfully ignorant about and he didn't exactly endear himself to that particular crowd of people because they were like well you know this is stuff that is going to portray India in a bad light but I would say you know what portrays India in a bad light are the actions of people who commit injustice it's not the people who report that an injustice is being committed that said I do have issues with this novel but these are issues rising from the fact that I am Indian and I speak the language um, that is usually spoken in places like Delhi I'm from Delhi myself and uh, the way that Adiga structures this book, in, I mean, it's all in English. And so he just translates a lot of the idioms and the colloquialisms into English. And I feel like for me as an Indian, that's very clunky because my brain is forever trying to translate that and to find a better way of expressing whatever it is that's been written on the page and that kind of interfered with my ability to really get into the flow of the book but I think like as an ideas novel it is um, something that continues to have a great deal of impact I have not reread this novel since I first read it because it's a lot 
I mean a lot but um, I have been following with interest the reactions of other people particularly non-indians who have been engaging with this book i've seen videos from for example courtney ferreta and i've seen it from katie books and both of them really liked it and i think perhaps if you're not indian then you might have an easier time engaging with it and if you're indian and if you like me speak hindi then you might find it a little difficult to engage with the prose but i think as an ideas book this is something that every indian should read so yeah try that one out and with that we come to the end of this tag i want to thank berna for tagging me if it's very kind thank you so much I'm actually going to leave this tag open for anyone who comes by, watches this video and thinks that it's a good fit for their channel. This is a wide ranging tag. I feel like it could be open to a variety of nationalities. And if you do it, please do let me know so that I can come check out your video. I follow so many people from so many different parts of the world. And, you know, I have friends who are from Russia and Norway and Turkey and India and Australia and the Philippines. I mean, I could tag so many people, but um, I want this to be for anyone who wants to do, do this from anywhere in the world. So um, just let me know. For more videos, please hit the subscribe button.